Good evening, y'all. Hey, it's Harley here. Um, got a little clock for you um, to see here. Basically, this is a 1982 Sears and Roebuck. Um, model number is 47201. It's a very simple clock with a vacuum fluorescent display. It does not have a radio or anything fancy like that. It's just a um, Sears Roebuck Tradition. See here, Tradition. Um, it is set for the correct current time. It is 12.03 a.m. on the 20th, which is a Sunday, 20th of March, 2016. Um, let me get this in more alignment. There we go. I found this clock for $5 at a local thrift store here in Pittsburgh. And um, it was red, white, and blue in Avalon on 65 for the locals. But uh, I thought it was really cool because it's just a simple VFD alarm clock. I do have the alarm set for 12.04 a.m., so when the alarm goes off, we'll be able to hear it. And it's going to probably interrupt me talking here any moment. But just to, um, just to demonstrate, let's go ahead and hang tight here for a moment and hear the alarm when it, uh, when it goes off here. I'm sorry, 12.05 a.m. Um, it's very simple. Here we have the um, the labels worn off these first two slide switches, but this one here in the middle is run. On the left is time set. On the right is alarm set. Here in the middle is off. The left is alarm one. The right is alarm two. I'll explain that in a moment. Hour button, minute button, and the alarm high and low. On the top we have a snooze bar. On the left side over here we have an alarm off button, which is not seen, but I'll turn it here so you can see it. Alarm off. Now this button and the one on top, the snooze button, are both metal aluminum or aluminium for those friends of ours across the pond. And uh, they are capacitance buttons, which means that simply touching them with your finger, just like a touch screen on an iPhone, um, will indicate to the circuitry that you have touched snooze or alarm off and it will respond accordingly. There's the alarm for you at 12.05. Currently it is set at high. I'll flip the switch to low so you can hear the difference. Here's high. And that's low. A little bit of a difference. And if you simply touch snooze, just like that, it cancels the alarm for nine minutes. All right, gonna put it back on high and I'll explain a couple more features of this clock. This one's made 1982 according to the date code. The Sears model number is 47201, 47201, and no, before you ask me, it is not on the list of OEM manufacturers for Sears Roebuck. Um, for example, you can take a Kenmore appliance, look at the list, the first three numbers of the model number, indicate who made it, whether it's Whirlpool, or whether it's, um, you know, Maytag, or whether it's um, United Semiconductor, or whether it's Work Electronics. Um, this clock was made in Hong Kong, People's Republic of China. Now, it's important to understand the difference between China and the People's Republic of China. All right, The PRC or Hong Kong, those are like saying Canada or Mexico versus the United States. Um, they are in the similar location, and they are in the similar country, but they are not the same country, okay? Um, the People's Republic of China have a separate government, separate people, and in fact, even separate currency. So they don't have anything to do with the modern-day equivalent of Made in China. Um, this unit was made in 1982. That was before we had trade agreements with mainland China to make ridiculous crap like that um, back there in the background you see the little colored um, alarm clock which I like because it's colored but still um, this clock was made long before we had a trade agreement with China so we did not have the so-called China pride that Spatz and I talk about very often so anyway on to the extra features again here on the side you tap this button well not even tap you touch it boop like that and guess what the alarm is off until the same time the next day. Or I can slide the switch to off. Okay, say the alarm went off at 12.04, 12.05, like I just had it set for on alarm one. And you have alarm two set for 12.10, okay? The only way to make that work is when alarm one goes off, 
like I had it set at 12.05. Don't put it off. Flip it over to alarm 2. And then it sits and waits for the alarm 2 time. That's the only way this works. There is no separate switch for alarm 2. You must have alarm 1 go off before alarm 2 can be activated. That's a must. If you set alarm 2, nothing's going to happen. Alarm 1 goes off first. Alarm 2 goes off after. That's just the way this clock is built. Um, furthermore, over here the slide switch, which again is not labeled because it has been used so much for over the last 33 years or so. Um, what you have to do to set the alarms is you have to put this switch, you have to turn on alarm 1 or alarm 2, and then you have to put this switch on alarm. See there? Alarm 2 is set for 12 a.m. All right. Let's reset it back to, there you go, now it's just telling time. We'll put it on alarm 1, alarm set, 12.05. Things have to be done in a specific order or it will not work. That was just the logic of 1982 electronics on this clock. Okay, um, furthermore, this clock had a battery backup, but it's not what we think. It is not a 9 volt in the bottom. No, it's this. There was a National uh, Pananica NICAD battery soldered to the circuit board. This is a NICAD AA battery. It was soldered to the circuit board. This battery charged while the clock was plugged into AC mains. And then if AC mains was disconnected, it would provide battery backup to the alarm for about 10-15 minutes. This battery is FUBAR. If you don't know what FUBAR is, then look it up. Or maybe do something other than watch Spats and Harley on YouTube. This battery is FUBAR. We're not throwing it out. We're saving it. It's 33 years old. It's a NICAD battery. Annie Who's. Now it's 12.10 a.m. And looking up at my atomic clock, it just flipped to 12.10 as well. So this is keeping perfect time. Again, there is... That's, there is no button there. It is a aluminum rectangle that says snooze on it that is coupled through a resistor and then to the main board on the clock as a capacitance uh, substrate. So basically you just touch it and it works. There is no push button like you'd find here. Same goes for the side and the alarm off button. Okay, well it's wood grain obviously on the right hand side it had a sticker that said simulated wood grain. That came off in the cleaning process. It has been cleaned and novus and alcoholed. Uh, the VFD tube inside was cleaned, and so was the inside and outside of the screen. The entire exterior was novus, as well as the power cord was vinylxed. Now, something I've saved the best for last. Whoop! What happens if you hold the snooze bar? <gasps> Three twenty. You mean the twentieth of March? Yes, this clock has a built-in calendar as well. It may be a basic clock with alarm 1 and alarm 2, but it also had a calendar. You can set, by holding the snooze bar and then using the hour and minute buttons down here, you can set the month and day of the current date. And obviously you can't set the year, so it won't keep up with leap year, but 320, it is 320. There you go. You wake up in the morning, you turn off the alarm, and then you go, oh, well, it's the 20th. It's really kind of handy to have. And, in fact, most clock radios, and, and even furthermore, in fact, most of our clock radios, and we have a metric-ass ton of clock radios, um, most with VFDs, none of ours have a clock, I mean, a calendar at all. You know, I mean, maybe my cell phone does. I don't see my... Shut up. <laughs> yes, I'll admit it. I was about to say, I don't see my cell phone. I'm recording this video on my cell phone. All of you guys, shut up. Shut up. It's not funny. I'm going senile. <sighs> Anyhow, um, 
Yeah, we don't have any any standard clocks around here that have the date on it as well, except for the atomic clock up there on the wall above my head. Um, but this clock, simple touch of the snooze bar, 320. There you go. All right, uh, the last thing I want to point out here is right here on the front there's a photo cell. It says ALC, which I guess is automatic lighting control. If you cover it, the display dims. You can't see it on the camera. Maybe if I turn this light off. All right, check it out. That's a little more noticeable. If you cover this photo cell, it will actually dim the display relative to the ambient light. So if you're in a bright room, the display is bright. If you're in a mediocre room, it will be mediocrely bright. And if you're in a dark room, it will be barely visible. Um, that's a good feature to have because obviously vacuum fluorescent displays are very bright and can light up a whole room once your eyes get adjusted to the darkness. So that little photo cell is very, very handy. Now, as a final note here, since we removed the backup battery, the 33-year-old nickel cadmium rechargeable, um, right here from uh, National, right here we go, there we go, National Panacea, or Pananica, right there, there we go, National Pananica, uh, this battery here will take 15 hours to charge, and then it will provide about 10, 15 minutes of battery backup just for the clock. Interestingly enough, the display would remain powered. Uh, the clock would look like nothing ever happened. It would remain illuminated and counting for about 10-15 minutes before it would die. Since we removed that battery and we unplug the clock and plug it back in, it will just simply return to 12 o'clock p.m. So, there you go. Um, nice little clock, five bucks, thrift store find. And I couldn't be happier. It's, it's actually one of the very few that we have that are a simple basic alarm clock with a vacuum fluorescent display, uh, especially one from 1982, which means it's as old as spats. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and uh, most importantly, you guys have a great night. See you next video.